Hi, my name is Lita Albuquerque and uh, I'm an artist and I teach in the grad department at Art Center and have taught there since the fall of 1987. So we're coming upon wow. the big anniversary, which is what we're doing with the print, uh, which is the 30 year anniversary of the graduate department, which is pretty exciting. And we are in what I call my sanctuary or the heart room, which really is the heart room. This is where it all starts. Actually, Art Center is a big part of here because this is where I, this is where I write, this is where I read, uh, this is where I study, um, and I'm on the computer a lot in here, and um, I, when I have classes, of course, I, I do a lot of preparations here, so Art Center is in here as well. But it is a very personal space, and I love it. Uh, I'm surrounded by nature. I have the rising sun through this window, the setting sun through that. On clear days I can see Catalina Island, uh, it's a little foggy down there today, but I can see Catalina in the distance. And we also call it the tree house. So um, it's a really special place and it has all of my special things. Cut. I don't know where to look. That's fine. You're good. Yeah. You're good. So, so this is kind of the place where all the creative seeds yes. take root? So I can say that. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, do you want to just sort of show yeah, yeah, us yeah. some of the yeah. stuff? Yeah. So this is the place where all the creative seed takes place. Uh, for instance, my favorite books, I mean, now it's probably going to alter some, but I have a whole section on Egyptian, uh, on anything Egyptian. Um, I've studied that quite a bit. And on anything astrology, astrology, astronomy, um, which is something I'm very uh, infused with. Um, and then I have different sections, all the art sections there, the theory sections here. Um, I have a lot of things on the earth uh, in other sections and architecture and photography. Um, and then the special books. Um, I, I try to have access as much as possible to, to all the books. Um, I recently got a, 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 as a gift a, a Louise Bourgeois book and I was delighted to see some of the drawings I'd never seen before which was really amazing. And um, so I come here and um, I write first thing in the morning and I do what I call automatic writing which is just, um, just not so much in the surrealist sense but just stating the time and date and location mm -hmm. and then I start I just write then I go down to the beach and I run and I swim every day wow. and and in the running I do what I call energetic meditations which are I they just came to me in 1993 and it was just um, of a way of connecting like the first one is called the art I call it the art meditation and it's essentially I'm running and wherever the Sun is at mm -hmm. uh, the, depending what time of day I run I I inhale from the sun to my heart and exhale from my heart to the sun wow. and I do that ten times and then I do what I call arc meditation where I put up my hands like this I make sure nobody's on the beach uh, <laughs> um, although once I saw someone it was in the fog and as the fog lifted I saw them do the same thing they were kind of mimicking me which was funny um, so one this hand is like the base of the mountain this hand is at the horizon and I, I used to do Kundalini Yoga, mm -hmm. so I do Breath of Fire, which is you pump your stomach <laughs> like that, and I kick, my, I'm running, yeah. and I kick my legs up, and I do that 33 times, and then I do the Arc Meditation 10 times, this 33, another 10, this 33, another 10, until I've done 40 of the Arc and 99 of, of the, um, of the Arc arc and the dome meditation I forgot what it's called do you dome. move your arms up no. to the sun side oh. no 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 it's just I'm 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 holding the dome of the sky essentially and then and then I let it all out and then I uh, on the exhale I um, imagine um, these spiraling galaxies uh, up through my chakras all the way up uh, counterclockwise and then I do another one clockwise and then another one counterclockwise so what I'm doing is I'm I'm locking in the energy and then putting it all out taking it from there and then and mm -hmm. then out. and it completely connects me to the universe and then you know I've done the writing that is from that strain of thought anyway and then I go into the studio and I work in the, uh, in terms of okay so 
this is where I write. My studio is where I do paintings and sculptures and installations and film and think about other ways of, you know, drawings, different different things. So, but I have this regimen that's been kind of exciting. That all opens you up. Is that the? Yeah, hmm. yeah. It's a way of get. It's it's my process. It's a way of getting into the process. The first thing, actually, there's five. I call it the pentagram. The first one, I just write three pages of whatever. It doesn't matter. It, usually my own my own personal stuff. And then I do the automatic writing. Mm -hmm. And then I go to the beach. So that's three. And with the meditation. And then I come here and and I do drawings. And then I come here and I'm in the studio. So it's a five five part thing. Wow. Yeah. It's pretty exciting. So in here, uh, like I said, I it's really where I where I center and uh, I love writing, and that's that's a big thing of what I do as well. Mm -hmm. And then I do a lot of works that are uh, video, filmic, performance. Uh, I, I'm big on collaboration. I do a lot of collaboration, so I'm more of a the creator, um, the narrative, but the actual shooting and the performative aspect is done by others. I direct the whole thing. And I just came back from Desert X, which is a biannual in the desert that I was a part of uh, where I did a piece called Hearth, uh, small h and then capital Earth and all the play on words with he, her, here, heareth, ear, heart, hearth, hearth um, art, of course, all, all of those, all meaning, all, all being an art and all being connected, that it's all of those things, that <clears throat> the individual, the hearing, the, all of that is connected with, with the cosmos and then ends up being art. So we did a project where I had a figure that I um, was a, a cast, a body, full body cast of <clears throat> one of my characters in my narratives, who's a 25th century female astronaut mm -hmm. who has a mission to come to the planet to seed interstellar consciousness. So in this iteration, she decides to place herself in a site of worldly power. Mm -hmm. uh, this is actually at Sunnylands. It's an Annenberg. Uh, estate. Um, when I first saw it, I thought, oh, you know, this isn't my cup of tea. It's too ritzy. It's too this, too that. I had a lot of opinions until I saw what it was that they were doing. And which it really was like a, a site where um, heads of state from, from all countries would come to discuss issues, world, global issues. And I really respected that and really was impressed with that, really impressed with it. And I thought, wow, wouldn't it be great to come in and do something cosmic within this kind of site of worldly power. So it was very political in a way. And then I did a performance, uh, where I wrote, uh, which was about listening. And I wrote the libretto. It was all about having to, I mean, I would go around the property here and I would just, I, I'd been working on it for about a year, what to do in the desert. At first it was like, um, like wanting to scratch the desert floor and, and find this alphabet. It was this very elemental, you know, thing about a human trying to figure out who we are, that kind of thing. And then it was about listening and how do I listen? You know, I've got to listen, but I don't know how. That kind of mm. words and worked with uh, this wonderful composer, Kristen Toadman. Uh, she's a member of the Los Angeles Master Chorale, so she's also a singer. And I've worked with her before at Mount Wilson for the Knowledges exhibition. Uh -huh. And she created this wonderful music. Um, I worked with a um, costume designer, Jillian Oliver, and we did the costume, and then an incredible choreography by Jasmine Albuquerque, who's also my daughter. Mm -hmm. um, and I've collaborated with her quite a few times. And we created this very, um, what was interesting about the piece for me is that the site itself of, of uh, um, Sunny lands and the music, the sculpture, the dance, the the sound, the color were all equal. They carried equal weight. Like the sight was as important as the color. The color as important as all the different elements. And that was really interesting to me. And I realized that that's it was kind of making a painting, but making a painting with sound, music, uh, narrative, sculpture, installation, movement, and in space. That's pretty exciting. So that's my latest. So I'm all pumped, pumped up about that. Um, and I'm also now she's I'm moving her the the figure 
Her name is Elisaria, and um, she's going to be going to different parts of the world to listen to different aspects here. She's listening to the earth, mm. um, taking her to the underground museum, uh, where she's going to be listening to a very different kind of listening. Um, Noah Davis was the founder of the underground museum, and he's no longer with us, so it's one way of of listening to him, also listening to that neighborhood, listening to the heart of a city, which mm. is very different. Um, and uh, that show is, is about color. I'm, I'm one of many people uh, in that show. So, and I'm going to be doing a show at Art Center on the solar eclipse, which I'm in process of doing. I'm really excited about that. I'm developing a narrative for that as well, of um, the idea of three and the importance of three, sun, earth, moon, mother, father, child, you know, all of these bringing both the cosmic with the personal, like linking in both, which is something new for me that I'm starting to do more and more and I'm really excited with. Can you talk a little bit about your evolution as an artist sure. and incorporating all these different modes of expression? Sure. You know, you didn't start out doing performance and all these things. No. So how does that happen? Well, I started out, okay, I'll start out with being five years old in Paris. And I really, really, really wanted to, uh, we, I lived in Tunisia, North Africa, but we were in Paris for other reasons. And I really wanted to study theater. And I, in fact, I begged with my mother to let me stay in Paris. She could go back home, but I wanted to stay and study theater. Of course, <laughs> that didn't happen. Uh, and then I wanted to be a dancer. And that didn't happen. And when I came to this country, I started writing and I wanted to be a poet. Um, and then, um, then I was acting also, and then I started painting, and then it was this real battle between painting and acting, mm. and um, and then I was with my husband to be at the time, who was a photographer and flamenco guitarist, and I was never home. I was always rehearsing, and he was in the dark room, and I thought, you know, I I want to be home more, <laughs> and so, oh no no, that wasn't what made the change. What made the change is I was um, I was. Um, doing a rehearsal on stage uh, and I was 23 years old and I was playing the part of a 13 year old and I I got and I realized oh my god I don't want to say other people's words I want to say my own words and I left the rehearsal never came back wow. <laughs> never went back to the theater very dramatic 20 year old stuff you know um, a little embarrassing but that's what I did and then I went straight into painting and uh, drawing actually mm -hmm. I started by drawing and what happened there is I had a very dear friend, Robert Overby, who's an, a, a, an artist of renown now, um, who was a graphic designer at the time. And a, a printing company was going out of business and they had tons of 35 by 45 sheets of paper that they were just giving away, they were gonna throw away, so he gave them to me. And I just started mark making. And what happened is, I have a degree in art history, mm -hmm. but not a degree in studio art. and I really didn't know at that time I really didn't know that much about contemporary art I mean I knew it but I didn't and a friend of mine was at Cal Arts at the time and she was showing me one of her drawings that to me looked like not much of anything like just marks on a piece of paper and and she was talking about it like very seriously and I thought wow so I started making marks I just started doing mark 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 making just continually and I did that for mm, maybe a couple years. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I, um, uh, a friend, again a friend, I had lived in Venice before, surrounded by all my artist friends, and they were doing a show in Pasadena mm -hmm. at Caltech on um, um, the, the zip code 90291, which was Venice, California. By right. that time I had moved to Malibu. And um, the curator, Everybody said, you've got to see your work, you've got to see your work. So she included me in the show anyway, which was pretty cool. And they were all drawings, charcoal drawings. What They looked very earthy. You know, they were abstract, but they looked very earthy. So I started out doing drawings. Then it was all about friends, you know. Then and the importance of, of who we associate with, the fact that we're all so connected, but who we see, how we come up in the world with different people. I see that so much with my students. Uh, but in my case, I was surrounded with, with graduate students from UCLA, uh, who had just graduated from UCLA at the time. And one of them um, was Ellen Zimmerman, who is an installation artist, and she started 
doing all these installations. At that time, it was the 70s, and it was San Francisco, and a lot of conceptual art and installation and performance, and I love that. And then Robert Irwin came into my life, and that was that changed everything because what he did would just make a mark in a gallery and completely change the space. And I really became interested in space. That coincided with a personal thing where I was painting and I was f fed up with my paintings because I thought they were getting too personal. Mm -hmm. And I decided, okay, I'll just go out into the world. Well, I ended up <clears throat> going into the earth and starting by the influences of all the people before me who had done that kind of installation, I started doing uh, pigment pieces out in the desert. So, so that's, I started there. Then those pieces, the, the making of them started to be performative. Mm -hmm. it, I was never in them, but I had crews, you know, like doing the actual, it, it started with one where I was doing very simple geometric shapes in the sand dunes. Mm -hmm. And um, I asked if there was a dancer in the crowd, and somebody said yes. And I said, can you dance me a spiral? And so she said yes, and she started dancing the spiral, and everybody followed her, and with their feet did the drawing, right? Uh, and then we filled in the drawing with pigment. And then we went up. I went up on a little airplane, and <laughs> by the time I came around, these two motorcycles had come and went right through the drawing and formed another kind of mark making, which I thought was really interesting. You know, it was just just as interesting as, as that. So it had that performative kind of element. Yeah. I think my love and my passion for all these other things, you know, kept, kept seeping in. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm trying to think when it really, in 1983, uh, I did a really exciting project in collaboration with Harold Budd, the musician, and uh, Robert Kramer, who is an architect, who's a friend of mine. And it was, um, uh, Selma Hola was a director at USC Fisher Museum, and they were getting a grant, and she invited Robert Kramer to do a show. He invited me, and I think we invited Harold. And this was the beginning of this kind of work. <clears throat> this is 1983, so it's been a while now. Um, where it was called Abasha, uh, image bearing light. Abasha is a Sanskrit term, and it was the idea of uh, Los Angeles at night and people sleeping, but also like what was happening in the cosmos at the same time. And the narrative went around, we, Bob and I would go around the, the city in LA at night and we would shoot pictures. So it was all done through photographs that we then, we also set up staging inside the museum. We lived in the museum for three months or the summer. And we shot a lot of, pic of people, um, I was pregnant at the time, and we used that in the work. Um, for instance, by projecting the earth on my stomach, and then projecting it and twisting it and putting it on a diagonal on the room, it looked like a galaxy. Wow. And so it had it had that kind of a narrative. And then with his sound, we we went around, like I said, for about a month. We talked to Harold. We said this is our thing. Thirty days later, he gave us his his music called. We, he called Dark Star. And then one of my joys was to put the visuals and the sound together. And at that time, the technology was, uh, what do they call those slide projectors? Uh, they're called something. Yeah. Uh, where, carousel. Not just a carousel, but they, you know, they, it's almost like an animation, but it's, it's all like that. So, and then someone stole everything in my studio that had a plug on it. And I had my carousel on top of that and stole the entire show. Oh, and no. it was like, and it was my slides. At that time, it was slides. So that was 1983. So real to 19, no, to 2012. I mean, there are things mm -hmm. in between, but yeah. real to 2012 when the Getty Museum did PST. Mm -hmm. And that PST was a way of archiving Los Angeles art from 1945 to 1980. And they had a performance uh, uh, part of it. It was called a Pacific Standard Time Performance in Public Art, um, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, what you call it? Per ah! Right, just uh, performance. Event, yeah. event. Mm -hmm. so, and um, so they asked me if, if any of my work at that time had been performance. And I said, well, they were performative. And, and so they chose one of the pieces, which is called Spine of the Earth, that I did out in the desert. 
performative in that the people who put it together performed the making of it. But I said, if I'm going to redo it, I can't redo the same thing. If I'm going to redo it, I'm going to have skydivers come and, and drop pigment down and, th you know, they'll have the pigment and they will be, they'll drop down with the pigment and they'll start doing this red spiral in the middle of the desert. Then Glenn Phillips, who I was working with at the time from the Getty, said, well, it turns out you're the only artist who's in the desert. We can't do, you know, all, and we can't bring people out there. You have to do it in the city. Look for a park. Mm -hmm. So I found this amazing park uh, called um, Baldwin Hills Scenic Overlook, mm -hmm. and that looked like a Nepalese temple. It has 287 steps that goes to this kind of mistaba. Right. Really amazing. And I went, and I thought, what am I going to do? How do I do that? Do I throw pigment down the stairs? What do I do? And at that time, I was really, really, I've always been impressed with crowds and with lots and lots of people. I always loved Mecca and how the mm -hmm. throngs would go there and, and kind of do that. And I was talking to my daughter at the time, and she said, you know, you love that so much. Why don't you do it with people? And I thought, wow. So I, I decided instead of pigment, I would do people. And I would still use a skydiver, and I would dress them in red so they would be part of this spiral. I had a skydiver, um, a precision accuracy jumper who can jump on a dime, um, jump out of an airplane, all dressed in red with red, um, you know, the red thing that comes out. And she jumped right in the middle, so she performed um, the beginning of then 300 people dressed in red. Um, spiraled around her and then went down the stairs wow. to form what was called the spine of the earth. Interestingly enough, I had called spine of the earth when it was in the desert. Here it was really a spine of the earth. So that was that, was that using hundreds of people. Then I did another project where I used hundreds of people um, for the Laguna Beach uh, Art Fest, the, their landscape and art festival, um, where they formed a line to be um, parallel the, the cresting waves. So, yeah, so I don't know if that explains it yeah. <clears throat> somewhat. Well, and then this other pigment yes. is this, this seems to be really <coughs> prominent in your life. How did That's this come about? The, that particular, the, the paintings, blue. the blue, yes, yeah. the blue is definitely, that's how I started doing my ephemeral works when, um, when I found out about, when I met Bob Irwin and how he would put a mark in the, land, not in the landscape, but a mark in, in the gallery and how that would shift everything. I started using blue out in nature, and the first piece that I did was a blue trench going out. It was on a cliff, um, and it, it looked like the blue would continue. It was the ocean was beyond to the horizon to form a cross. So that was mm -hmm. one of the first things. So it was all about unification of earth and sky. So you get pretty blue. elemental. I'm I'm so elemental. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm completely, you know, it's the, it's the guttural, it's the, yeah, it's the right there. In fact, for the solar eclipse show, I've been thinking a lot about it. And whenever I'm in nature, then, then I can hear, you know, and, and this kind of very, I realized, and I, then I was looking through movies that, that would inspire me for, for the solar eclipse. And I realized it's all this elemental things. And, and the eclipse is something so profound in that way. Uh, which is pretty interesting, just yeah. just there. So yeah, I'm into <laughs> basics. <laughs> do you know a different kind of culture? <laughs> Can you do you have a an image of the print for the for the mint mm. project? Do you have anything, or do you want to just say what it is? And yeah, that was. I can show you. I can show you some things on the computer. Okay. I, I think, think I have can. something downstairs, but I'd have to hunt for it. That's okay. Why don't you just okay. describe it? I'll describe it. Doing. Yeah. Okay. At that time, uh, there was a discovery. Well, not quite. It had been like a few months before a discovery of this super cluster of galaxies called Lanake. Mm -hmm. uh, and they use the Hawaiian term, which means immeasurable heaven. I should really bring that up because it's pretty amazing. Um, and I loved here. Okay, let's see what we have. So, whoops. Let's see. 
this is the right one. Not quite. This will show you some. Uh, let me see. So I, I did a number of, of different. Cool. So this is wow. the actual Lena K cluster. And, uh, and so then I placed it in this room with, a, with the cosmos. So I was trying different things with it. Um, yeah, I can go through. Yeah, there were just different. Well, I guess I'll show you. I think this is probably will do just as well. Um, I wanted to show you the actual scientific thing, but I can't find it now. But so this this year is Lanaka. Okay, this is another uh, cluster, and so we have the Milky Way galaxy. Then there's the Virgo cluster. Then there's the super cluster. Then there's another cluster. Then there's the K cluster. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just phenomenal, uh, and and it contains hundreds of billions of galaxies. And this is they show that this is um, how it's moving towards what's called the great attractor. And so I was toying with this kind of an idea. I just went through a lot of different ideas uh, about it. Wow. And then it was budgetary. <laughs> um, and but also kind of a simplicity. Mm. But it was that idea of um, of this, but also that it was, I, I don't think I have the actual one we ended up using, let me see, no. Um, like reference, oops, that's not in there. I think, no. uh, not too much in here. Um, so it was, then it became the way it is now. It's very abstract. You, you have no idea what it is. It's this kind of movement. Mm -hmm. More than anything, it's a movement. Um, and it was very exciting to go through that whole process. I had Hannah Boom, was one of our grad students who also helped with the project and but then we decided we it needed to be just two colors and go through all of that so that's up do you collaborate with students much is that not so much that ever happens? no yeah. not so much with students I collaborate a lot mm -hmm. but not not so much with I haven't mm -hmm. but I'm open I take them on trips is what I do <laughs> oh do you yeah I've, I've had a summer program at one point and take them to these land art trips and also in Mexico Mexico City. What does teaching bring to your practice? How do you, what keeps you teaching? Bring my practice. Or just uh, to your life? Like to my life. I just really like to be, to see what's happening now and to, to be part of, um, part of this continual wave of creativity that mm. shifts all the time. And I get really involved with, you know, obviously some of the students. I like the community. Um, it hasn't always been easy for me because it, it w I wasn't really, I was the most different in terms of part of the grad graduate program, Art Center Culture. Um, you know, here I came out a little, you know, they, did, they were quite knew what to do with me. Um, <laughs> but um, I really like that kind of intellectual community, which is amazing. And I've seen it go through so many changes. Um, I just like being engaged I like being engaged in that, which you don't find. I mean, it's such a great program. I can sing its praises yeah. all over. I mean, it's amazing in that, um, first of all, you know, how we choose the students, but then the, the faculty and the ratio of the faculty to each student, how dedicated every faculty is to make this student understand how they think, mm -hmm. um, and then giving them as much information as possible and then because it's, it is a very collaborative process because of the different ways of whether it's committee meetings or reviews, we see as a faculty, we see, you know, we, we comment. To, sometimes it used to be 10 to one of them for mm -hmm. like a mini review. So we get to see how everybody, how everybody is in terms of responding to the yeah. student. Um, it's, it's incredible. And then when we have meetings, we're we're continually talking about each one and really concerned and mm -hmm. and giving a lot of information. Now Jack Bukowski does this incredible, uh, you know, speakers program 
Yeah. Um, and it's, it's a real community that feeds me tremendously. And I love the students. I love being around them. And, and, and then I see them at openings, and we become friends. So that's another part. Well, I guess the final question yeah. is, you've been an artist in LA for, yes. for a while. My whole life, yeah. Have you seen the experience of being an artist here change and the art world <laughs> yes. here change? So much, yeah. so much. It's not, it's not the, same, the same world at all. Uh, when I was first doing it, it was the Venice Boys, you know, it was mainly that, and that was like pretty much what, it, there wasn't too much else, but then of course there were a few galleries, like Cirrus was a gallery, New Space, um, um, Mitsuni, Mitsuno was a gallery, there were a few galleries that, and it was the 70s, so, you know, the art was obviously a, a very different thing, Robert Irwin was a very big part of it. Uh, but he was more on the educational level. I mean, he really did speak to a lot of students. He was one who really influenced a lot of people. Um, and then, yeah, and then the Cal Arts came along. I mean, Cal Arts was always there, but the 80s and Cal Arts came along and that kind of influence. And Mike Kelly and all, all those people, um, out of which our program was fund founded, mm -hmm. right? Not the Mike Kelly, but, but uh, Jeremy Gilbert Roth, Richard Hertz. Um, and the attitude and, and, and Patty Protesta and Tim Martin, even not Diana Thayer didn't come from that, but um, they came out of that kind of education, just like USC before it fell apart, uh, came out of our programs. All the professors there were our students. So that was that education. Um, and um, so, uh, so that was a shift and then you know painting became a big thing I'm still just talking about LA mm -hmm. and then um, yeah and then now the schools are, are even more important because obviously there's more people there's all this influx of people from all over the world from not only other parts like even places like New York which was unheard of in the 70s no one from New York would move to LA right yeah. so but now from Europe and from everywhere LA is kind of the place and it's com and now it's also about community I was just um, a keynote speaker for a symposium on it was called extra territories and what museums in LA not just the, the big museums but all the museums how they could accommodate art that was no longer just in the white cube but that is all over and now what's going on there is so much of the political so much of the community base so much which is fantastic right they're all just like i'll never forget can't remember what year what decade but richard koshalik was he was no longer at mocha i don't think maybe he still was i think maybe uh and he was so excited because he'd just come back from korea and at that time it wasn't global you know art was still United States mm -hmm. and Western Europe and and he was so excited to have seen you know Korean artists and all that and now you know I mean it's only global globalization and it is what's interesting and then I have a very dear friend who's an artist Lisa Soto who's very involved in the Afro-American society uh, and um, and that's a whole incredible incredibly rich and amazing expression that's coming out uh, that shouldn't be segregated anyway, but you know, it's that so We're no longer in the same world number one as we all know and number two. Yeah, the art in LA Like when I think of the people that I knew in the 70s They didn't it, we also didn't have the kind of uh, access to all this information mm. uh, and to this kind of education I think education is a huge thing that has really altered um, the art scene. Um, and the counter, you know, there's the counter of people who don't want to go to grad school and who don't believe in that and who, you know, more grassroots and that's becoming as sh equally exhibited. Mm. So it's really, I'm, I'm happy to say, you know, it's, it's kind of wonderful to have lived long enough to be in a place where you can see so much change and, you know, it's just, with it. It's fantastic. Perfect.